We have a stacked weekend edition of Wager Watch coming up. Belmont Stakes in Saratoga. What does that mean? I hopefully have a winner for you. Also, we'll look ahead to Game 2 Sunday night in the NBA Finals. Are the Celtics that much better than Dallas? And what did we learn in Game 1 that we could apply for props in Game 2? And Caitlin Clark, fresh off seven three-pointers, faces one of the best teams in the WNBA. We'll break that down as well with Brian in the house. Come join us. All right, Doug, you got a little primetime play action. It is a massive game, massive game. We got the New York Liberty taking on the Connecticut Sun. Of course, the Sun undefeated in the WNBA. The Liberty, of course, the runner-up in the WA Championship last year. And primetime game, basically, uh, ABC. So it's got a huge audience for it. It should. It's a very good game. Sure. But the Sun only favored by one point at home. I think the fact that Sun should be favored by more than that, you do not. No, I'm kind of surprised. It opened pick em. And, I mean, if you look at the futures board, right, New York are shorter favorites to win it all than the Sun. And we have seen this in a lot of sports, particularly football with the unbalanced schedule and things along those lines. Remember last year, so much to do with the Niners' favorite at Philly. What happened? So the Sun, give them credit, they're 9-0, and and the Liberty have lost twice as a double-digit favorite. So give the Sun credit for feeding who's on their schedule. Yeah. But of the five teams that I think are the top teams, and they're one of them, the other four, they've only played one once, and that was at home, a one-point win in overtime. So, yes, they haven't stubbed their toe against the bad teams in terms of losing. I mean, they're only four and five against spread, so it's not like they're just trucking everyone. Yeah, This will be a good litmus test. Now, I think the Sun are pretty good. Don't get me wrong. Would I be shocked if the Sun won? No, by no means. Um, I lean to the Liberty because I think when they get up for a game, they're, they're better than the Suns. Their best is better than the Suns' best, in my opinion. But the Sun defense can make them play not their best. And I like the under. I think we're going to have a defensive mindset in this game, sort of a playoff vibe. It's Commissioner's Cup. Yeah. So winner, I mean, gets a leg up on a chance to make 30 grand each player. Absolutely. Right? Because the head-to-head matters so much. So this is a big game for sure. So I think they're both going to bring it. And I think we're going to get defense more than anything. Okay. Does uh does it matter at all that they're playing at home, the Sun are, and they're only figured by one? At like an afternoon game on a Saturday? I mean, this isn't, you know, Cameron Indoor. It's going to be shaking. I I don't think so. They got a little like, robbery there. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's better than not having to travel. Okay, so we know that, right? So there's a comfort for sure. But I don't think it's a raucous atmosphere. I don't know about the team bus getting harassed by paparazzi or anything like that. Oh, wow. Okay. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, if I'm the if I'm the Liberty, I'd rather it be at home, but it's like an hour and a half ride, so it's not that big. And uh, the Sun aren't going to go undefeated this season, are they? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. But the, the the record for the best start is 13 and 0, so they're within striking distance. Okay, all right, that's a good one though. A good prime time play, a good game, and you're going to go ahead and and, and take the. Uh... I lean to Liberty. I like the under. I'm betting the under. Who you got in this game? I think the. Mm, I think the Sun win. Okay. I think this I wouldn't be shocked. Either. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be shocked. But I'm like, you obviously wouldn't be shocked if right. you win the game. Right. So I'm I'm interested to watch this game too. It's going to bet on it too. All right, Dougie, little betting buzz, little betting <laughs> buzz action here talking about the ponies. Do you like the ponies? I love the ponies. I grew up going to the track in Southern California, so Santa Anita and Hollywood Park. Okay. I go to Del Mar once every summer, but I am by no means an expert. I outsource it to my guys who do go to the track every day. So I, I, I get some good information. All right. All right. We have the Belmont Stakes, but this is actually the Belmont with a twist. Sure. The Belmont is going to be race and Saratoga. Saratoga is only a mile and a quarter. Belmont's a mile and a half. It's a big grueling track. Right. However, Saratoga is a place you can actually go and have a good time. Yeah, and I, you're dressed for the what people would think is the Derby, but you're dressed for Saratoga. I don't know if you got the you gassed up the bird and it's waiting for you and you <laughs> to hit the road as soon as we're done here. But it's an awesome one of my biggest regrets of living in the Northeast is not going to Saratoga. Yes. It's like three hours away from Manhattan and all these other tracks like Belmont that have substituted for Belmont are all within about thirty minutes. So okay. this is definitely a different vibe, but it's a town, it's cool. It's got some Del Mar feel to it as well, although okay. it's not the surf and turf that Del Mar is. The funny thing is, and everyone who I've talked to, and even people who don't want to bet the favorite are betting the favorite, Sierra Leone. Oh, right. And he's 9-5, to five, so in the sports betting world, plus 180, we like. Yeah. But the favorite, people are like, eh. 
But the funny thing is he's a closer. So he actually might prefer it to be a mile and a half, but it's not. It's a mile and a quarter. He might run out of real estate based on, but his stats and everything, all signs point to him winning this race. Um, if you want a little extra, maybe the nine and the 10 horse exact a box kind of thing. But I'm not, you know, going broke and get rich on this game. Either way, you know, on this on this race, I think I'm going to have some fun. But I, I do know tr- enough people I trust say the favorites, you got to at least loop them in the exactas and the tries or just bet them to win plus 180 or nine to five, lock it in. And, you know, he, he might go off at even money I'm hearing. hearing. So all right, c- come race, come post time, he might get a lot of money and a lot of steam that adjust the odds. So there you go. Saratoga, here we come. Sierra Leone, that's the one we want. Yeah, folks, you know what this means. King Arthur's Court here. The big dog is out. And I think that uh, he, he's got a, a nice dog for this one, Doug. You got hockey, of course. The Stanley Cup final is coming up. Uh, the Oilers at the Panthers. The Panthers are favored by minus 140. However, <laughs> Arthur doesn't think so, huh? Our resident do- underdog better likes the dog. And it's it's a popular favorite, man. I've talked to a lot of sharp betters who all are on the Panthers. Really? They think having gone there last year in the Stanley Cup, which Gretzky talked about how much of an advantage that's going to yes. be for them, just the stage, the spotlight, the elevated attention, and the better goalie. But but Edmonton's been just fine between the pipes. Obviously, they have Connor McDavid, who's an absolute stud, and they're on a roll. Like They just beat Otter, too, in Dallas. Like They've outscored them the last, what was it, two and a half games, 10 to 2. Now, granted, there's been a long layoff, so not exactly hot, but they've demonstrated that they can beat a good goalie, a really good goalie. So, this is a gut play for Arthur. He's not he's not a big he's not a big hockey guy, but this is a gut play game one at least. Uh, he likes the Oilers. Maybe he's inspired by that fan, yeah, making the video around. The, uh, I, maybe uh, maybe that's Arthur's uh, calling. But he and I both, yeah, are <laughs> inspired. But no, I, for some reason, I I personally do think the Oilers are going to win the cup. I this is not an X's and O's thing. It's just a gut feel. I think they are, it's their time. I think it just feels right, right Go now. Off the gut. And I've gone against the Canadians in the past and stuff like this, but I think we're going to have a Canadian uh, team win the cup for the first time since 93. I see you want a bunch of fans from north of the border. Yeah, we're trying to expand our audience. <laughs> see that? Subscribe, like, you know. Well, oh, okay. That's actually a, a very good bet, I think. Um, they have as good a chance as any, and the, I don't think the gap is so big. Yeah, you follow the Golden Knights closely. I mean, you know these teams. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the Golden Knights beat both of these teams on their way to win in the final sure. last year. So, in the Oilers, uh, actually watching some games up there in Edmonton, they love their team. Yeah, they have the uh, the Stanley Cups displayed out in front of their their arena. So, I think they, I think it, it's not a stretch to say they can add another Stanley Cup. Okay, so let's start a win streak for Arthur Saturday night. There we go. I like it. All right, Dougie, marquee matchup. This is a good one. Game number two of the NBA Finals. Sunday, oh, man, Dallas, they laid an egg in game number one. Fact. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? The betting lines, they reflect how badly Dallas played and how well Boston played. Boston minus 420, 420, huh? Uh, and Dallas plus 330 in this one. You already, we talked about it off camera. I love Dallas in this one. So you still think Dallas can win four out of the next six games? Absolutely. Absolutely. Why? Because I think Dallas was playing better than any of the teams coming into the final. They had the toughest road, so they were already tested. And um, I, I, huh, I think they have the best two players in this series. Fact. That's a fact. But I think Boston has the next five. That might be a fact. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So that's no. And, and and I mean, look, this version of Kyrie, I don't think is better than Tate. Either way, um, I think Boston is getting slept on. Like my whole thing coming into the series was. Both things can be right. The East could have really unfolded at a very easy path, but also Boston can still be very good. They are True. trucking opponents statistically. Now, yeah. it's not the end all be all, but from the regular season, based on their performance, they had the most 20 point leads, the most 20 point wins. And it's a variance thing, it's a math thing for me. Um, there's going to be stretches where the Celtics miss a lot of shots because they're so dependent on the three. Yeah. And it's not like they can just dump it into Shaq and he scores or go through Jokic or whatever. They're just going to bomb a bunch of threes, but their defense is so good that even when they're cold a little bit, and e- you might win a couple quarters. That's not what Boston's trying to do. They're not trying to crush you for four- every quarter. They're just trying to beat you over f- with 43s attempted. 
And they're going to... So I don't think Dallas has enough offensive firepower with the way Boston defends them okay. for them to like hang around the series. Is Porzingis going to play like that again? But he, how, how well did he play? He played great in the first quarter, and that's it. Fine. He had, he had 18 points at the half. So he played great in the first quarter, yes. And they built their lead up in the first quarter. Correct. But they could have had other... They, so they moved the ball around to the open guy. My my concern is Luka's going to get his, and they clearly took him out of the game yeah. in terms of his uh, maximum yeah. impact, right? He had one assist. The team as a whole had nine. And Kyrie played terrible. And Kyrie played terrible. So I expect Kyrie to hit open shots. Obviously, he missed a few that he would normally make. But I just think with the like Luka, he's going to go one-on-one. They're not going to need much help on him. And the other like role players, Washington... Like Jones, like they're not going to play that great because they're going to be guarded. They're not going to be wide open like they were in the previous rounds because people double teamed. I, I think Boston's ability to switch on D is what makes it so competitive. No, I agree with the fact that they're them being able to switch on D and having a bunch of long. Guess who guarded Luca the best? He was one of eight when guarded by him. Horford. Horford. Yeah. But Horford's a good defender. Correct. Like He's also 38. Goal. Yeah. <laughs> so it just shows you. So it's not even when Brown guarded him or Tatum or even like a help. Drew Holiday was physical. Yeah. No, it was a hor- I mean, it's, I just think that, like, let's believe what we know is that Boston, it could be just, like, that good. Got this for you. If you want to believe what we know, we do know that Boston, home games, playoffs, the two. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, they've, they've shot themselves in the foot. I think some of that was disinterest, but I still would lay. So you think Dallas comes coming back. I like Boston minus one and a half games, minus 165. So it was plus 110 before the series started. So that means Boston has to win the series in four, five, or six. Yeah. They can't go to seven because then they automatically lose. Yeah. I think there's a little bit of value on that. I do. Okay. I, I Again, I think Boston will lose probably game three, but there's a chance this is done in five. All right, man. That's why this series this is, a, is so intriguing. But this goes against the entire concept of zigzag theory, right? You can't overreact. So the Celtics are seven-point favorites in game two. Now, usually... With game one closing line being six and a half, okay? Yeah. Shark money came in at minus six, closed six and a half. And so the team that lost, it usually favors the next round. So it'd be like six, right? Oh, no. Because of the performance and the what happened with the, both teams, look, they actually jacked it up to seven. And the series price was supposed to be 360. It's now 420. Because they're like, oh, no, this might be a bigger mismatch than we thought. Okay. So pre- that doesn't mean it's the end all be all. Yeah. I'm just saying it's kind of fascinating in that, you know, just ignoring this exact theory. They're giving me money. Oh, oh, there you go. I almost want to go hammer time in this. Big All right. Money. Don't let me stop you. <laughs> I, I I merely lean a couple ways, but gotcha. I'm not firing. I do like the Boston minus one and a half games. I, I think they're too good. I think I just don't think Dallas has the firepower. Cool. I got my popcorn ready. <laughs> it's not that. All right, Dougie, time to give some props. Something that you've been very fond of recently. With- Usually as a series goes deeper, I get a better feel for things. I kind of like absorb games one and two, but I, I think I have some strong opinions even after just one game of the series. Okay, like a boxer, but you're taking yeah, well, all the... <laughs> okay. All right, well, here we go. We got some points props to, to take a look at here, and we'll start with Luka Doncic. 31 and a half. These are all over-unders, obviously. Jason Tatum, 26 and a half. Jalen Brown, 23 and a half. Kyrie Irving, 23 and a half as well. I mean, he was horrible in game one. And then Chris F. Porzingis, who was fantastic in game one, specifically in the first half of this, 14 and a half. If I'm looking at this, I'm thinking Kyrie Irving's definitely going over and Luka probably going over as well for this next game. Yeah, I mean, look, see, game one was a blowout, right? And look, they played until about three, four minutes left, but still, it just had a weird flow. So really it's hard to take a lot. Now, I'm with you. I think Kyrie's going to play better, but is playing better going over 23 and a half? I think he had 16 points in game one or 14. I'm fine. There's no way I'd bet under. Yeah. Um, I expect him to be more aggressive, but so, at some point they got to get their teammates involved. And so I think that's the key with all this. That's one thing I took away from game one is mm-hmm. clearly Boston has a game plan on Luca. On defense, when Luca's on D, they're taking it at him. They're going to yep. pick and rolls, drive, wear him down. And on offense, they're going to make him do everything and they can guard him with switches and not double teams. Dallas was most effective in the previous rounds. When he drew a double team, passed it to usually lively at the free throw line, and he would hit it for a wide open short corner three or a bucket and things like that. I think they're going to get Luca get his, and they just don't want anyone else to beat him. That's why Luca had one assist. 
Um, now he probably would have had a couple more, but if someone made a shot, some, but it's not like he was on the verge of 10, right? I mean, yeah. the team had nine. So it was a lot of one-on-one -on -one with Luca and Kyrie. So I'm with you. I think Luca goes over Kyrie probably does, but that's as far as I'll go on the Dallas. Okay. Thing. What about, what about the Celtics? So Jason Tatum, he honestly, you you know, me and Jason, Tatum, right. We don't admit. Yeah, no, I, I think he's very good. Um, I mean, he's all NBA first team three straight years and he's productions there and everything. Fine. I think he's going under here because yes. yes, the way Dallas defended and they were saying, let's make the other guys sort of beat us. Tatum was a willing passer. Yeah. So he got doubled, kicked it, double, you know, or, you know, the way the offense moved, it popped around. So they were just fine. I mean, the first pass of the game was a Orford baseline dunk. And then Derek White's hitting threes. Holiday fills up the stat sheet. So I just think Tatum, I think they have so many weapons with Porzingis back. That I think 26 and a half is a big number I think so. for a guy who's willing to just swing the ball, right? He doesn't have to shoot. Now, he's going to shoot probably a lot, but I'll take under 26 and a half. I, I, think, I think that's if Dallas keeps that defense. Now, I think they will, but who knows? Either way, Tatum's uh, a guy who will not, doesn't have to get – he's not going to have the Luka usage. Yeah. So I'm okay going 26. I mean, if you, if you compare Tatum and Doncic only being five points apart. That's wild. Yeah, I'm going to take under on Tatum. Yeah, no, that's wild. What about Chris Epps? I mean – he he eclipsed that number. Yeah, first half. I but he only had two in the second half. And he, if he does come off the bench just to get his his land legs and keep Horford in the rotation, I'm a little reluctant with that. Um, but I think that's the right. I mean, his first game one total was 15 and a half. He goes over and then still moves it. They still move it under. That should tell you something. No, I, I agree because they're probably looking at it the way we're looking at. It, like, man, he played his tail off in that first game. You're calm down, folks. He's right. going to keep doing that. So one would think. But again, who's ever open, right? Last round, Horford had wide open. I mean, he had what, twelve attempts from three in one game. Yeah. Next game, he had like two. Yeah. They they don't get whatever the defense dictates or the wherever the bounce of the ball dictates. Here we go. All right. So those are some good props. This is what another something that'll be fun to watch in this upcoming game. Of course. All right, Dougie. We got a big game in the W. It's always a big game when you're talking about Caitlin Clark and you're talking about the Sun, the best team. Best team in the WNBA. For now, the record-wise, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We're doing more Remember, better. you're going to be at the Aces games. You got to be careful, Brian. Got oh. bullets in born material. You are what your record says That's you true. are. That is true. All right, so the Fever, they, they pick up a win, a game that they should have won, going up against a Mississippi team that state. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Projected line on this one, 10 and a half. The Sun favorite in this one. What is this, like the eighth meeting between the Sun and the Fever? <laughs> So I was thinking, I like they oh, they blown out, but then they also cover. They nearly won. so that's true. I think the the version of the fever we saw on Friday, at least a version of that version, is what the fever are like. A few days of practice. Now they're not going to get to face the Mystics all the time, but I think their their ceiling is pretty high. I mean, they had near wins against the Sun, near win against the Storm, Liberty. They were competent with. But their floor is as bad as any. I think it's worse than the Mystics. Like, their floor is when they're soft, getting pushed around, they're disoriented on offense, they're tired because they're on a back. Yeah. Side. Like, they lack an edge. Um, now, it didn't bite them because the Mystics just lack everything. But, well, when you're, you know, when they have injuries and stuff, but they don't have the competitive edge that you need when you're going to get out physical like the Sun can do, whether it's Alyssa Thomas, Bree Jones, even Dewana Bonner, who's not. Physically, no, but she's tall. But like, she will hold the ball in the pace. He's score edge too, right? She plays with competitive fire. Now, Erica Wheeler brings that, but she's off the bench. Um, I just think there's a softness with the with the fever. I'd like to see evolve. Now, I understand Clay Kalen Clark's frame is flight. She's a rookie. I get all that, but some of the veterans, like Kelsey Mitchell, should be sort of wreaking some havoc in there. I, I think she should be a tone setter a little bit more than she has. And I think they're just getting used to playing with, alongside each other. I think Aaliyah Boston. It's very hesitant every time she makes a move on the court. It's just a new offense. Yeah. Uh, I think Caitlin Clark is used to passing the ball and then going to get the ball back. Yeah, she did it at Iowa instead of going away, screening away. So hopefully they've worked it out those four off days. I I lean to the favorite here. I think you you do like that. We don't know if the Sun are still going to be undefeated when they play because there's another game between now and then. But I'd lay it. Just because the but the Fever are competent at times. I just think the Sun are just too physical. But the Sun also have a knack for not blowing out teams, so that's that's what gives me pause. So I lean, I lean to the Connecticut Sun. Okay, I only laugh just because we judge the Fever like ah, uh, they they've only barely lost. Yeah, 
they barely lost, and they're they're you know point spreads are the great equalizer. <laughs> there we go. All right, so we're leaning to the ten and a half. 